inexplicable footage surfaced of a flying saucer UFO shooting down U.S. nuclear warhead during a planned test back in 1964, where they didn't have lasers. Numerous publications accused the Pentagon of hiding video footage of a flying saucer attack a U.S. nuclear warhead. Ufologist and writer Robert Hastings, who presented the results of his investigation on the website The UFO Chronicle, has no doubt that there is relevant footage kept away from the public site. Retired U.S. Air Force officers Lieutenant Bob Jacobs and Major Florence Mansman told Hastings about the incident itself, and allegedly they personally saw the recording because they themselves produced it together with other specialists who were part of the group that was engaged in photographic and video recording of missile test launches. Jacobs then directed the military telescope unit in Big Sur, California, which filmed the rocket's flight over the Pacific Ocean. Mansman served as a chief image analyst in Vandenberg Air Force Base, now Vandenberg Space Force Base, in Santa Barbara County, California. The existence of the recording was also confirmed by Louis Elizondo, who introduces himself as a former director of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP. He claims that he was studying UFOs and, among other secret footage, saw those that the lieutenant and the major did talk about. Now, according to witnesses, the object was a classic disc shape. While rotating and glowing with its lower part, it circled, service, it circled several times around the warhead, which had separated from the Atlas rocket, and fired four bright beams at it. At least that's how everyone who saw it understood the recording. The missile was real, the warhead was a dummy, and did not carry nuclear warheads. Perhaps the alien attack was also of a demonstration nature. Skeptics, of course, doubt and do not believe in aliens, but they cannot explain why the warhead suddenly collapsed and was lost. According to confirmed reports, both the object and the warhead fragments hit the radar screens from which pictures were also taken. There are probably reasons for the disaster that do not involve alien intervention, but Jacobs and Mansman are extremely embarrassed by the fact that two days after they viewed the tape, two CIA agents came to them and confiscated the footage. Elizondo attempts to find the footage were unsuccessful. He admitted that the recording was missing, and most likely, in his opinion, the Pentagon is simply tearing it down. The photo of a flying saucer taken in 1964 discovered. Perhaps the flying saucer, the UFO that attacked the warhead, looked exactly as it appeared in the photographs taken in 1964. The images, several of them, were found in the Graphic and Publication Services branch collection within the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA. Each image stored in the archive is clearly labeled Flying Saucer, June 4, 1964. The video was, so that's, that's uh, obviously 60 years ago exactly. Now, the video was filmed by someone named Paul Villa, who claimed that having telepathic contact with the aliens, he learned they would arrive in the vicinity of the city of Peralta, New Mexico. He arrived at the indicated time and photographed the saucer on which they arrived. He said that these aliens, these extraterrestrials, demonstrated their strength lifting his car into the air, but there is no photo of the levitation, levitating car in the archive. This mysterious story has generated continued interest in UFOs and their possible effects on humanity. Questions about the origin, motives, and purpose of such appearances only increase the conundrum, which emphasizes the need for further study and disclosure of such amazing phenomenon. And while the mystery of the UFO that shot down the nuclear missile in 1964 remains unknown, its solution may shed light on one of the most exciting events in the history of human interaction with the unknown and mysterious world of space. And this is on Soul Ask. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.